To get 15% off your purchase of $100 or more, go to M-O-D-C-L-O-T-H dot com and enter code BRAINCANDY. episode 262 yeah hi friends i wish there was a way that we could not even see each other before we start recording right, it right. ruins everything it really does i mean not everything let's everything. not be everything it ruins my care. life <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing ever we can't resist talking about stuff what's the deal with us we it's like we're like best friends or something i know we like talking to each other we should have a podcast if that's the worst of our problems <laughs> that we just like talking to each other too much i think we're pretty good we were talking about the new, well, newish documentary, mm-hmm. Three Identical Strangers. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. I think it could, no, it's easily in my top five Me favorite too. movies of all time. Me too. Like easy. Yeah. Like I can bump out, I can even make it take up two spots in there too. It's like <laughs> two spots. Yeah. It's like second and fourth. <laughs> That's hilarious. Not even like in a row. Right. No. Because you know, who knows? Um, I have been wanting to see this film for a long time and it finally is available for on demand on like Amazon prime and Mm -hmm. iTunes, um, to rent, but it's about these triplets that didn't know they were triplets until they were 19 and man, like the long, the, I, the, all I had heard beforehand was you don't want it to be spoiled. Yeah. And that it just keeps getting weirder and crazier for the whole film. The whole film. I mean, there were multiple times where I paused the movie to see how much longer was left. And I'm like, there's no way there's more. (laughs) There's no way. How could this... I'm getting goosebumps right now as I'm talking about it and they haven't gone away in like... How can we talk about it without ruining it for people who haven't seen it? (sighs) Maybe we could talk about themes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not about the half well the, the reason that i knew sarah would like yeah. it is because oh it involves God. um the uh, questions of nature and nurture yes. of course because it's so important if you're triplets but you're not raised together the, those mm-hmm. questions come up and what kind of family you're in versus yeah. your you know your biology yeah and it was that. interesting that they found that the three boys just happened to be in upper middle and lower class families like mm-hmm. they just a, a spread across different uh, like socioeconomic classes, mm-hmm. and there's just really freaking inst- interesting insight into that. Yeah. Oh my god. And then I was also, and this wasn't really the main point of the film, but yeah. just because we were on TV, there was a for me an oh interesting god. component of what happens when your life story, yeah. your personal narrative, becomes entertainment. Yeah. And your personal narrative. Often the part that becomes the narrative is a very small portion of who you are. Right. They don't capture the whole, it's not like, you know, your personal narrative and it's, you know, the story of your life that has every, it's a very. Incomplete. Very incomplete. And it's also like that element of, so when they realized they were triplets, this was a big, interesting story for Mm -hmm. the talk shows and stuff. And they really enjoyed sharing their story because what wouldn't you? Right. right. I mean, if you suddenly just discovered there were three of you (laughs) and that you looked alike and you were adorable. One of the parts was when one of the mothers said, when they all met up for the very first time, they rolled around on the floor and like wrestled like, like Like puppies puppies who had just, you know, found their litter mates. Yeah. And that is something that, like they had a deep, deep knowledge that they were a, a you know, yeah. a trio. And that's interesting to me. And then then there's the component of the the viewer, the voyeur watching the story unfold and want, wanting the story to be a particular way. Uh-huh. And then kind of disregarding whether that's actually the true full story. And that's what I see, you know, with reality TV mm-hmm. and, and just, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. the our own personal yeah. time on television. And so that part was interesting to me. When, when the third one came along, it was so unbelievable to me that my brain almost couldn't even 
it it was easier for me to think it was a hoax. Oh, the third one until there until the movie. Had you not seen the trailer? No. Okay. I, all I got was a text message from Susie <laughs> oh, that was like, you need to watch this. And the last time she did that to me, I like... Didn't. Well, and I had like a huge cathartic like, you know, release and it was so amazing. And so I'm like, oh my God, I got to sit down and watch this right now. I don't have time to watch. We got no point in watching the trailer. Why do I need to do that? I got to dive right in. Oh my I God. I literally watched it. As not soon as I got that, anything. not knowing anything. Okay. And I was like, oh, I, I was like, this has got to be a hoax. And because it was almost too much to even believe. And then when I, I was like, oh no, it's not a hoax. So then what's the, what's the twist? What's the deal? What's going to happen? Yeah. This can't be it. Yeah. And then of course, after I'm done with films, that's just the beginning. Cause then I begin my deep dive oh my on God, the internet. I have to know. <laughs> I have to know everything that you know. I mean, I just felt. Okay, from a viewer of the documentary, I wanted to know more about their family lives, mm. their wives, the kids were mm. not in the film really. It was you could tell they had some one of, at least one of them had a kid, but there was no discussion. They certainly weren't interviewed. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, well, I need to know about that kid. I need to know more about the other people who were interviewed. Yes, mm-hmm. me too. I like went oh. on a little mini deep, a, a shallow dive. If you oh, will, of, okay. Uh, of yeah, some you of the and I have people. different interests. Yes, I was like, okay, gotta know everything about this. <laughs> yes. Anyway, you should watch it. Oh my god, watch it, and then like, I don't know. I feel like we should, we need to have like some, like, <sighs> right, brain we need candy a chat book room, club, like, yeah, movie review thing. Anyway, it was so great. Good. And then I went into class yesterday. I have a uh, individual supervision with my supervisor who, for the therapy we do, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I was doing a presentation that day and I'm like, oh my God, you know, I just, I got no sleep tonight. I really wish I, you know, where it's a little more, um, like clear thinking right now. And I, I, I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry because I had to stay up and watch this documentary. Oh my God. <laughs> and I told her and she's like, oh my God, I, it's amazing. Right. I saw it in the theater. And oh. I'm like, okay, see. We yeah. Get, it's we a are, whole thing. Yeah. It's a whole thing. And I'm like, and then I told everybody at my school, like, the, well, not everybody at my school, I told all the people in my office, I said, I was telling them all about it that morning, I'm like, here's the deal, it's $5.99 on Amazon, if you watch it, and it's not one of the greatest movies you've ever seen, <laughs> I will pay you that five ninety nine. I will give you the money. And I'll if you get it in SD, it's four ninety. Four ninety nine even. So I will give you. I'll give you five ninety nine even if you buy it in SD. Mm-hmm. So that's how good it is. Yeah, it's mandatory viewing. Man- mandatory. Yeah. If you care about like the idea of ident- personal identity, what makes you who you are, and what can ruin a person, yeah. then you will like this film. Or what is what. What are areas of resilience? Yeah, well, that wasn't really featured as much. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of what I took away. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. We'll have to talk about that later. Yeah. Well, you're looking through rose-colored glasses on well, that one. You know. Um, <laughs> I don't... I oh, One, yeah. one thing I do need glasses for is when I uh, watch television. Mm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. lately, I've been watching television using TiVo, Ooh. which is so crazy because I was under the impression that TiVo was like your mom and dad's like first yeah. situation yeah. where they were like, hey guys, we got a TiVo and now <laughs> we don't have to use the VHS recorder. <laughs> but TiVo all along through the... TV journey has been updating and getting new features. Mm. And so I'm really excited because, as you know, I don't really know how to work my TV. Right. And you don't even really, yeah. I just don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And so they set it up where it's like a no brainer. And so not only can you, so you know how, like on a DVR, you have to fast forward through commercials uh-huh. if you want. Hate that. This just push button and skips Ooh, all of them. Know. You don't have to like time it right or anything. <laughs> So it skips that, which I love. Then they have an app on your phone Mm -hmm. where if someone's like, oh, you you should watch um, the new season of Will and Grace. And you're like, oh, okay. And then you like go on your phone and you just push a button and then it'll record on your TV, which is amazing. Um, And then they also have this feature where like, you know how some shows you want to watch, but they have slow parts? Yeah. They have a feature where you can watch it 30% faster, but... They pitch correct it so it doesn't sound like what? mice. Is th- Are you kidding me? I this mean, would have been so good 
on, oh, what's the show with the president? And then he, come on, not the West Wing. The House one, of Cards. House of Cards. Yeah. There are so many. I'm like, do we really need to do you a need long a little, scene yep. of people driving in the bus? Oh, come on. I let's have, go. I have a solution. Oh, my God. That's so cool. I know. I'm going to get you hooked up with one because you're going to love it. TiVo's put together a deal for you guys, too. 20% off any TiVo Bolt OTA or TiVo Bolt box, which one is for antenna. Some people, like, cut the cord, so all they have is, like, an antenna. Yeah. And then one is for cable. If you have, like me, a normal cable yeah. situation, you just aren't using it the way it should be used. Right. Um, just head to TiVo.com slash BrainCandy20 and remember our promo code as well as brain candy 20 that's tivo.com slash brain candy 20 with promo code brain candy 20 for 20 percent off so these pioneers are back in biz mm. um can i tell you though a depressing story oh, please do that has been on my mind in addition to the three identical strangers uh-huh, uh-huh. i came across a video on youtube from oprah from 2000 of this guy who you may have heard of but he um, w- was also a twin, funnily enough. Mm. And he and his brother were getting circumcised. He had a botched circumcision. Oh, I know this story. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And then the mm-hmm. doctors convinced the mom to, have him take- to raise him as yes. a girl. Yeah. Yeah. So it, she- we talk about this in sex therapy. This specific Yeah. Case. He became like this, yes. um, what do you call that when it's like a one person yeah, case uh, study? Case study. Yeah. And Okay, so the mom, it's 1965. Yeah. Everybody just does whatever their priest or their doctor or whoever Correct. tells them. That's how it works. Yes. So, okay, mm-hmm. that, that's what we're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Which I'm fascinated by that because especially back then, people thought boys were different than girls. What, what made them think like, oh, oh this God. is going to work great? I think they were thinking that, oh, God, maybe at that time the question of nature versus nurture really wasn't answered. And that if you just raised somebody as a I don't female, know. I mean, to me, it's still like that where they're like, girls are girls and boys are boys. And this is what they play with. And this is what they like. So back in 65, so I like think you can take would... an arm off, you can take a leg off or you can take a penis off. You're still going to be a boy. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm shocked that anybody was yeah. into this idea and mm-hmm. convinced this mother to do it. Gosh, so crazy. So he's raised as freaking Brenda for his whole life until... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they had to give him hormones to get breasts. The, oh, he, my God. Uh, all Can you imagine? the terrible, terrible, terrible torture. And then at 13, the doctor's like, okay, we're going to make a vagina because he didn't have anything oh my God. at that point. These are the details that are left out of the book that we read. We talk, it's <laughs> yeah. like more the <laughs> clinical. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is the juice. <laughs> you should have me come in. Right. Like, and here, here's here's what actually yeah. happened. Yeah. <laughs> And so they're like, hey, we're going to make a vagina. And this 13-year-old boy, oh who's B- Brenda, is like, F you, ran up on top of the roof of the hospital, was like, if you try to make me be a girl anymore, I will kill myself, which oh of course God. you would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the mom was like, so we never went back. And oh, we- my God. <laughs> I that is, those, those are the details we need. Yeah. So then wow. they let him, you know, be himself. And... Um, be, I think, I think he ended up choosing the name David, but that wasn't his birth name, whatever. And, um, so then he goes on Oprah to talk about it and he had forgiven his mom and he was like, she was damned if she did, damned if she didn't. Like what was she, she just tried to do what she yeah. was best. And I got real into this darn clip and then. You did the deep dive. Damn it. I know. Cause that we do the one part detail that I happen to know about the end of that story is well the end of that story. Yeah, so he he ended his life yeah. uh, in I think two thousand two, and I mean I mean what the heck? Why am I finding all this stuff? It, mm. It's terrible. But mm-hmm. I was really distraught. Yeah, and I just thought, how could he? And he also had um, depression in his family. And of course, if mm-hmm. you're predisposed to depression and then Mm -hmm. suffer this incredible pain. Yeah. And a really traumatic childhood where you do not, your identity is so. He didn't fit in anywhere. Anywhere. He did end up getting married. He was married for 14 years Mm -hmm. and she must've been a lovely woman because she said he was very hard to live with us. You would imagine. Oh gosh. So Um, much pain. Yeah. But I thought, my God, what a story and what people endure. 
So that was crazy. And I, I was looking him up to see, like, wonder what he's doing yeah, now. Like Thinking that he's going to be a public speaker or whatever. Yeah. Or even just have a nice, happy life. Well, because that's the other thing is it for some people, they might be able to do that. So. But also, he, you know, we've come a long way and are still there's still a long way to go. But even in the past 10 years. Mm-hmm. So you look at 2002... And there wasn't a, a transgender person on television. Yeah. There wasn't anybody who... He wasn't represented I mean, he wasn't anywhere. even a trans person. Right. He was just a victim of a horrible a, situation. A mistake, right. Yeah. And I just can't believe it all went down. Yeah. And that that's why, the, to be honest, the three identical strangers film and then that story... And you see, like, the ways that the medical field can, can go awry. Mm-hmm. And when it does, it can ruin lives. It's really a sad situation. Oh, I, okay. You got something for me? I was just going to switch gears because yeah. it's so depressing. Well, I was going to tell you a, a wonderful story about how a medical field saved a life. Let's hear it. By inventing a new tool to remove a dildo out of somebody's butt. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, a tool? Yeah. Was there a need for this? Oh, yes, there was. Okay, tell me everything. So there was a hospital in Milan, at the AAST Grand Hospital in Milan, and they had a patient who came in who had a 23-inch plastic penis dildo up his bum. Wait, you would think it, since it was so long that... Nope, it was all the way in there, and they couldn't get it out, and they said in the report it couldn't be removed. How with... could you fit that much in there? Uh, they have an x-ray. And I've already, poor Dahlia, because I've already emailed her this article. And I titled it (laughs) Invention of New Tool. And then it's just the link. So poor thing is going to, I haven't pressed send yet. I am freaking dying. (laughs) That is the best part of this story. (laughs) My niece Dahlia. New tool invented (laughs) for the removal of another tool. Sarah. What? What am I? What? Sarah, Should I, no, I give no, no, her no. some heads up? No. No, no, no. no. I I'm, I'm stuck on the story. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're telling me. I'm telling you. This was you. a man. Yes. Who put a 23. I sure can't believe was. they even make 23 inch dildos. Mm-hmm. That's unnecessary. But anyway, he put it up his butthole. Mm-hmm. Too far. Yes. I'm going to show you the I can't x-ray. believe at. Let me see what I'm looking at here. <gasps> mm-hmm. Oh. Oh my god! Oh my god, your reaction is so much better than anything I could have ever hoped for. It looks like she might cry. Your her mouth is wide enough to fit the dildo. Stop! This is the craziest story I've ever. Oh my good, sweet (laughs) Jesus! On a cracker. <laughs> oh no. How at inch 20 did he That's not That's a really good point. You know, I'm thinking that there had to have been something else. It it's there there was clearly this was an accident. <laughs> but like, this is not a dildo like, stuck. This is he was impaled. Yeah. Ugh. He self impaled. What are they doing in Italy? Right? Well, you know. Wow. So, anywho, they created. <laughs> anywho, they created. Uh, they called it an endoscopic extraction of the device. I'm surprised they didn't just have to do surgery. It caught the distal edge of the dildo, and Jeez. they created this new guide wire lasso that now has been like as a new medical invention. <laughs> guide wire lasso. Yes. Oh god. And that, now they're saying like this is a. <laughs> It, this it says in addition to advancing the field of foreign body removal, this tale has a happy ending for the patient. He was able to return home the same day as the extraction and suffered no lasting symptoms. According to the report, he wrote the physician a thank you note expressing his appreciation that they could solve this embarrassing problem without an operation. Sarah, mm-hmm. come on. I I just report the news. <laughs> What an idiot. I need to talk to this clown. <laughs> that is stupid. All right, what is he doing? What was that going to do for you, sir? 
That's, that's a good point. I think you misunderstand where the good parts are. Right. Because let me explain, since you ha- aren't looking at the picture, you guys, that <laughs> end of, like, the head of the pi- dil- dildo yes. was up behind the ribs, like, by your breast, yeah. by, by his breastbone. Mm-hmm. Now I need a lot of therapy, and luckily <laughs> I can call or I can text the people at Talkspace oh. You need to it. help me cope with this disgusting picture and news I just heard about. <laughs> oh my God. Talkspace is an online therapy company, which is so awesome because a lot of people are either shy to go to mm-hmm. a therapist in person or, you know, have difficult schedules to work around or, you know, just like want to have things on call available whenever. And Talkspace allows you to message a licensed therapist from anywhere at any time. You can get them app or you can use your computer. And it allows you to improve your mental health, even if you've had trouble making time for it in the past. And, you know, people are busy. And it's all, therapy that can be pricey as well. Yes, sure can. And sometimes you just need something to get it off your chest or you just want maybe a, a bit of encouragement. Yep. And that's the thing that they, you don't have to talk about your childhood memories if you don't want. You could just ask them about how to manage your stress or live a better life. You get quick answers to yeah some of life's, life's daily problems. Yes, the Talkspace platform has over two thousand licensed therapists who are experienced in addressing life's challenges we all face. To match with a perfect therapist for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy, go to talkspace.com/braincandy. And use the code Brain Candy to get forty five dollars off your first month, and show your support for this show and therapy. That's Brain Candy and Talkspace dot com slash Brain Candy. I am going to need them <laughs> now. O M G. On a lighter note, wait. <laughs> okay, this is about the new emojis. Oh, did you see them yet? No. They, I know we've been talking about yeah, these. Yes, they're on the way. Okay. I think there's 90 in total. Whoa, that's a lot. I will look and see if I can quickly pull up the pictures, but here's Ooh, some good news. Yeah. Redheads are going to rep- get representation. Oh. Finally. Was that not in no. there? How, what? And one of our listeners wrote and was like, you guys talk all the time about emojis and you never mention that there's no, red, no redheads. <sighs> what? How is that even possible? Isn't that stupid? That seems like, well, I guess they're only like, what, 1% of the population? Yeah, but... One percent of the population needs. Oh, there's uh, broom. Still, oh, I was gonna say still no cleaning products, but you just said broom, so I'm very happy about that. The blue shoe we talked about, the oh, flat is there approved. And my personal favorite, white wine, salt. Oh my god, salt! Is I should white see wine it's on front there? and center. Have a look, see if white wine's on there. I didn't mm. even notice. I don't. I'm see super it. excited about the salt. There's a bagel. For you Jews out oh, there who are feeling for, left yeah. out, or for anyone. You non-Jews who absolutely love bagels, yeah, like Gentiles. me. A raccoon. <laughs> what else is on there that catches your eye? Uh, an amoeba, like a weird, oh, weird. science-y amoeba-looking thing. A magnet. I feel like I'll use a magnet yeah, a that's, lot. That's, that's clear very in our useful. Name. That's very useful. Uh, a little, like a sponge. I don't know about, well, yeah, soap, toilet paper. Toilet paper, definitely, definitely. useful. Yep, a receipt, a flying frisbee. I could have done without that. Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, a compass looking thing, but like a handheld compass. Some lettuce. Mm-hmm. Mm, a, a, a badger? <laughs> it's not a skunk. It's definitely a badger. A badger. Yeah. Honey badger don't give a shit. Yeah. This one looks like it doesn't give a shit either. <laughs> Let me see that yeah. again. He's in but the no corner right wine. under the That X. was a hoax or yeah, something. no white wine, huh? Kendall Jackson just didn't didn't really... Uh, they didn't come through didn't for come, us. Yeah, didn't get enough... Uh, I love how you said that that's an amoeba. What is it? It's the double oh, helix. No, it's not. It oh, up there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I know what that is. <laughs> yeah. I thought you'd be excited with a lobster. Oh. Because, you know, you I do. have weird things. I do. We, now like, I'm going to have to like talk, find more lobster facts so that I can, it, when I post about the episode, put the lobster emoji <laughs> in it. There's a cupcake. Peacock. I'm glad there's a peacock. Mm-hmm. Anyway, a male peacock. So you know. Yeah, that's right. What wonder, else is new? I wonder if you like click on it and like it gives you the option of the female. <laughs> right. Good yeah. point. Yeah. When are they fixing my direction problem though? Well, I think that's a lifetime of pain you're going <sighs> to deal with. I was also looking at you know thinking of the direction thing. I was sending a message to Landon and I was looking for the emoji where it's like the girl 
giving a kiss to the guy or like the girl and guy kissing. Oh yeah. And then when you look at that, it looks like the guy's giving the kiss to the girl because he come he's like first, even though they're kissing each other. I don't know. For some reason, I wanted a picture of like a girl kissing a guy's cheek oh, and there's something like that. And like, like she's leaning in. Yeah, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're getting real picky, I guess. I know it's ridiculous. And by we, I mean Sarah. <laughs> it's t- I agree. It's dumb. Um, what else did I want to talk about? A lot of stuff. Me too. What? What do you want to talk about? Like, I, I think I have another story that'll blow your mind. Oh, God. It's not like a dildo story, but you know how we have um, certain feelings about gender reveal parties? Yeah. I'm I'm gonna, negative yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to make you uh, hate them even more. Or what? at least, it, like... How is that possible? So, uh, oh my I, I want to find where this was. So, oh, the forest fire. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. They, like, set the forest on yes. fire. Why was there fire involved in somebody, a gender reveal? So somebody who worked for the forestry had set up a gender reveal situation where they're shooting a barrel or something filled with a combustible material they just i think they didn't realize just how combustible <laughs> and it was supposed to re- reveal either blue or pink like dust uh-huh. and when they did it it exploded everywhere and is the reason why um oh, what is the name of that fire i should have freaking had. it was a big deal it's huge i have it uh did i pray that no one died right no one died right i don't think anybody died thank god but he as soon as the good well, there's nothing's really good news, but he did report it. Oh, he was a border patrol agent. Yeah, he was yeah. like someone who yeah, should know Sawmill fire, the sawmill fire. It burned 47,000 acres in Arizona. And as soon as he was done, as soon as it happened, he like, you know, reported himself, turned himself in, he pled guilty. It's to a, a misdemeanor violation, I guess. And it says that he has to pay more than eight million in restitution, starting with a hundred thousand dollar initial payment and monthly payments thereafter. Come on, I mean you're you're done. You're li- you don't. How could you ever do that? Well, you can't. You so can't. that's what makes me think it's like not real, right? Like it's like a, just on paper. You know, but then it's almost oh god, it's like jail without your freedom. Let me guess, or the baby was free- a boy. Oh, I, I, that's a good question. I didn't even see that in the article. They probably don't know. They probably didn't even... That's a really... Yeah, they left that out. Oh, wow. Oh, it said he has not revealed the gender of his baby. <laughs> After all that! Oh, my God. What if it's a girl and he's like, oh, I just was so upset. Right, probably. Yeah. Loser. Oh, my God. So Can you my that? Thing I was the, really mad about that. I mean, to each their own. And, like, if you're super into gender reveals, like, what whatevs. You yeah. know, there's bigger issues in mm-hmm. the world. Um, but I just, I don't like it because I don't really want to celebrate anyone's gender, but also because to me, it feels like the ultimate of like, my life is so important and everyone should celebrate every part of my life Mm -hmm. when it's like that really to me is like something you and your partner Mm -hmm. should be. Yeah interested in no why well, should i, I give a what, shit what i really having? thought about this when i was listening to um the interview you had with the woman who wrote that book that i love what's her name Ma, marley grace? marley marley grace um and she said it, you just need to do something outside with people you love and not tell anybody about it you know <laughs> and it's like right. the it's the it's i think it's the like the announcement and recognition culture that we've yeah created or started or whatever, like it's just taken a, a life. Okay, of its own. so you think that's what it is about? Yeah. Okay. I think it's wanting to have, document it, or want no more like wanting it, it. Oh, it's so weird to explain. It almost like makes it seem more significant if a whole bunch of people then you know. There's something about having a life on social media, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, would you even have one of those parties if you weren't on social media? Right. Probably not. Right. Because you'd have no... no. What would be the point? What would be the point? Mm-hmm. So then it makes you think, okay, well, then what is the point? If you wouldn't have that party if you weren't on social media, is the point of the party just so you can put it on social media? That's kind of fucking backwards. Well, right, but it's pervasive. Like, that's the whole... That's what everyone does all the time. It's not just baby reveals. Yeah. Well, I think we need to take a look at that. I know you are. Yeah. Like, you think about this all the time. I was Because I realize how it's, like, really unhealthy. 
I was laughing about how you hate social media, but then like when you post a picture, everyone's like, she's so pretty. Mm. I love her. She's amazing. I worship her. And I was like, uh, what part yeah. do you hate exactly? It's not bitch? the wonderful things that people say that it does things to me. It's the, it's the social comparison and feeling like if I don't, if you well, know, yeah, but they're probably like, comparing themselves to you and they're like worshiping you, Yeah, but everybody's doing that to everybody. Mm. And I, people are, I compare myself to you. And worship you and look at your pictures. I'm like, God, she's so beautiful. <laughs> well, maybe it's the fact that I'm wearing mod cloth clothing. That probably is it. I think that's it. <laughs> Falls in full swing and mod cloth has all kinds of fun sweaters, cute knits, lots of outerwear that you can wear in your pictures that Sarah will envy. <laughs> Um, or you can prep for your holiday party. They have like a party boutique, Ooh. which is cute. Cause I, I mean, I never know what to wear to holiday parties. I'm like, should I go festive? Ah, I always classic? say, I always say the more dressed up, the better. You can't be overdressed. Can't be overdressed, agree especially at a holiday party. Bring on the sequins. Yeah. <laughs> and they have a full range of sizes from double XS to 4X, which is wonderful. They have models of various sizes as well, so you can see what they look like on um, someone maybe who looks like you. And uh, I, what's the last thing I got on there? I have got a couple sweaters because mm. I'm like feeling fall, even though it's still mm. warm here. I got a jumper. Oh, did you? Yeah, like a black that's jumpsuit, fun. and I wear it to work, and it's so cute. Oh, that's cute. And uh, my friend Kristen, who told me, and I will pass this information along to you, that anything that you like on Mod Cloth, like you favorite it or put a little heart on it or whatever you do, yeah. uh, <laughs> enters you in a $500 shopping spree. Gift wow, card that's fun. Yeah. She like showed it to me. She's like, oh my gosh, I have so many entries because I like <laughs> so much stuff. <laughs> to get 15% off your purchase of $100 or more, go to M-O-D-C-L-O-T-H dot com and enter Brain Candy at checkout. The offer is valid for one-time use only and expires on January 5th, 2019. To get 15% off your purchase of $100 or more, go to modcloth.com, M-O-D-C-L-O-T-H dot com, and enter code brain candy at checkout. All right. All right. Okay. I have to share a story of how I stopped being polite. Oh, good. Yeah. Get ready for this one. Okay. So it was just yesterday. Uh, I was walking to the bagel shop that I love uh, across the street, walking across the crosswalk. And with me was the, you know, we weren't together, but we were both crossing the street at the same time. Um, this, you know, really beautiful, like you know, busty, like wearing tight clothes, this woman who's like gorgeous Mm -hmm. and, you know, me and my work clothes walking next to her, probably not looking half bad either. And as we cross the street, there's this construction worker. Mm -hmm. And I know exactly what a phone looks like when you're being videotaped. (gasps) And you bet your ass he was videotaping us. Mm, Probably mostly her. Were you just walking? Just walking across the street. But it felt so like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like it felt invasive and I can just tell and he was like trying to be all sneaky about it like holding it down but like obviously oh and my then God. so I, I walked close enough to where I could look over my shoulder to double check that he was in fact videotaping and he was and so I walked by and I couldn't I was like I can't deal with this 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 feeling is just eating me inside I have to say something or do something so I got my phone out and I opened up my freaking camera and you bet your ass I walked right over to him and I was like, I just wanted to make sure we both have pictures of each other. And I snapped <laughs> a picture of him and he was like, I, I, I was just taking, I was just take, answering a phone call. Fuck you. No, you weren't, you dickhead. So I didn't say that. So then I just like walked in the bagel shop, got my bagel and then I came out and he like saw me coming. And let me tell you, I felt, it was, I was still having that like churning feeling yeah. of uncomfortable yeah. stuff until... I saw him turn into a little fucking baby and basically like find something like for himself to do. Like he like adjusted something that he didn't even need adjusting like in order to have uh, to like avoid eye contact with me or even like anything that I would say. And I watched him do this and I'm like, I know exactly what you're doing. You fucking like, you know, I want to call him the P word, but I feel like that's gendered and don't want to do that. But wow. I was just like, Ugh, okay, you know what? That was because he turned into like this little wussy like. Do you have the picture of yeah, him? Yeah, I sure do. I sure do. I walked right into school and I was like, guess what I just did? And this guy thinks he's going to be like this. Well, and what is he going to? Oh, my. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he like. smiled for He it. like smiled, but he like uncomfortable. Like he was like, and then he pretended to talk on his phone. I'm like, you're not even talking to anybody. <laughs> 
fucking idiot. <laughs> Sarah, that picture, I would frame it. Right. That is the best picture I've ever That's seen. That's hashtag stop being polite. Wow. Yeah, and I did it. And I, I felt so good when I saw him feel so uncomfortable with how I confronted what it. What is he even going to do with a video I don't, of that's two what I said. women What are you going to do, like, in... jerk off to it? Because this woman had, like, really big boobs, and she was really curvaceous and, like, what wearing tight wearing? clothes. Oh, tight clothes. Yeah. I mean, Damn. just, she, it wasn't like she was wearing anything that's, she just happened to have a body like yeah. Jessica Rabbit. Yeah. And she was wearing tight black jeans and a tight black top. Did she, do you think she noticed? No. Yeah. And then I felt even, like, I felt like I was defending all women everywhere because yeah. I'm like I know you weren't videotaping me but I know exactly what you're doing to her what are you going to do whatever he's going to do with that I don't like Ugh. and the fact that he thinks that he just has access yeah. to women's bodies where he gets to videotape them at any time he wants and then what fucking jerk off to it later <laughs> come on That's sick well, I'm not happy Yeah, I'm just mad because nobody's jerking off to his photo well that's for sure for sure that guy. Anyways. I read about this loft, speaking of your Instagram hatred, <laughs> um, that you can rent for $15,000 a month. Whoa. And it's designed for influencers to use. Oh, for goodness sake. So like lighting is perfect everywhere. Everything is oh like my God. just like all those images. Yeah. Like they're, Cause they're all the same totally. too. Like everyone's house looks the same yeah. to me. Yeah. And, um, they all have the same. Oh my God. They all have that Prada sign where it's like the Milan with the arrow of like how many miles I, everybody knows it. Or it's like the Chanel bottle in a picture frame. It's so basic. Everybody. And this one has a, uh, the future is female, mm-hmm. right? And they have like a four poster bed with like um, faux fur mm-hmm. throw on yep. it, and then like that Sherling throw and uh, tray one. for them to eat like whatever coffee in bed <laughs> or whatever, and like everything is set up. There's a rooftop situation, the bathroom, and it's created by this, I guess, PR company, mm-hmm. and then an influencer that has. I don't know, like certain sponsors yeah. that they then have to create images for and they don't know what to do. Like if they live in a normal New York apartment, so then they have to rent out this space to make the images so they can get paid. I mean, really all this is doing is it's like classic advertising. We're just skipping the, we're just using real people instead of an ad agency. You know, I mean, this is no different than if you needed to promote something like needed you know whatever you're promoting diet coke and you would like go to the ad agency and say i want this commercial and they would hire these or you know i want this print ad and they would hire these models and they would go there and they'd set it all up do you prefer that do you find that to be more authentic or something that's that's a really interesting question Because part of me is like, yeah, I prefer that because it's like saying what it is, not like projecting an image that life is perfect, that life is perfect or that these people like we're all aware that, you know, Coca-Cola is behind the ads and Mm -hmm. that they're picking out those people Mm -hmm. and it's all like that. But I don't think people are as aware when it's uh, hidden in lives of people that are Instagram influencers. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've talked about it before because people oh, often weird. begrudge us whenever we have a partner that we are promoting mm-hmm. and they get annoyed and they say that like they just, they just want a free podcast with like no, no interruptions. But that would be like saying I just want a free television show with no interruptions. I know. It makes no sense to me. Cuz like this is a part this is media where there's like an understanding that 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 the same way when I watch television like I'm watching an American horror story I'm like oh, Enough. Yeah, that's why you got. That's why you need TiVo. Right there, you go. Exactly. <laughs> right. I oh. get the impulse. Like nobody likes yeah. to be sold anything. That's like a, a universal human thing. Totally. But nobody also yeah. likes. Remember, I told you that Rhonda lady said our greed was unbecoming of oh us God, or whatever. So stupid. And I thought, what if she went to her job, and and somebody said that to her, like, I can't believe you're working. That is so greedy. Because that's is right. the exact thing that right, she's saying right, to me, right. oh. and so um, that's a fascinating thing for me because it's a balance. Yeah. But do you feel like it's different on Instagram? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because 
it would be like if television were tele t- TV shows and then in between like I don't know home videos that people posted <laughs> It would be right. like one thing because you'd be like, oh, well, sometimes there is and sometimes there isn't. What the heck is that about? Yeah. But because we know this is the format, this is how it is. This, this is, is how they make their how living. They make their living. Yeah. On Instagram, that is all blurred. Yeah, that's We true. go on there and it's like, okay, I know what I'm going to see. I'm going to see baby pictures and first day of school photos from my friends who you know have kids. And then all of a sudden you're like getting advertised to. I don't know. It just seems. Yeah, I know. It's, it a lot of like, people agree, but I just hate how they all look the same. Yeah. I like a little variety. That's what it's, it's like. They all they all look the same. It's like Abercrombie commercials. It's like all that stuff. Is, everybody looks the same. It's not like we're doing anything different. Yeah, we're just changing it from to be honest, print to you know. That was one of the things I really liked about the original seasons of the our shows is that like they yeah. had di- yeah. people that looked a little different. They never yeah. really had um, larger people, which I. I think is a problem, but people who were not able bodied or Yeah, usually um, they didn't. Who they, they did have a wheelchair gal. Oh really? or no, they didn't. I take that back. Yeah. It was Lacey dating a wheelchair yes. guy. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, one thing I have no problem promoting whatsoever is the quip toothbrush. Yeah. Have you tried it? You should. <laughs> it's so great and it looks so cute in my bathroom. And I feel like it does a really good job brushing my dang teeth. It sure does. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I keep mine in my work bag. Okay. As my well, because the thing that you put it uh-huh. on your mirror with, mm-hmm. you can use as the cap when mm-hmm. you travel. Oh yeah, Sarah. And I just keep it <laughs> in my like little go bag because it's a freaking sixteen hours at the office. You need to brush your teeth. You really do. At I some mean, point during that day. Please, for cripes. It's sake. too long. Um, it has a built-in two-minute timer, and then it pulses every 30 seconds, so you know when to switch sides. Like I said, it has that cover that mounts to your mirror, or you can unmount it. Super, It, it doesn't stick like normal stuff. You can take it right off mm-hmm, and put mm-hmm, it back mm-hmm. on, whatever. And then brush heads are automatically delivered to you every three months for five bucks. And that's why I love Quip. And why they're backed by 20,000 dental professionals. Quip starts at just 25 bucks, and if you get... Oh, sorry. If you go to get Quip dot com slash brain candy right now you get your first refill pack for free with equipped electric toothbrush that's your first refill pack free at g-e-t-q-u-i-p dot com slash brain candy love it i love you mm. with all my heart mm. <laughs> and, and your clean ass teeth <laughs> every time i go to the dentist though they have to like fix whatever my old dentist did you know what do you mean? Like when I was a kid, I must have had like a quack. Oh. And they're always like, yeah, that that filling is like chipping away. Oh. And le- she said the word leaking. But that's not something mercury you ever want to hear. Or whatever the hell is in. No, you don't still have mercury in your mouth. Yes, because there's silver from when you're the 80s. That's yeah, but you're put. supposed to like get those taken out and put new stuff back in or something. Well, it's controversial. But she did, she did take it out. Oh, but is it controversial? Yeah, because some people think it's like asbestos as long as you don't disrupt it. Oh my god! But if it's leaking, <laughs> yeah, that's like not something you would like in your mouth. I she goes, it's leaking, and I'm like, what's leaking? God, that is a word I do not want to hear no. with anything that's been put in my body. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny <laughs> and true. Yeah. Have you heard about oh my god. just changing. anything related to the body in general? Leaking is probably not. Have you ever good. heard of the diagnosis of a leaky gut? It's like the grossest. I'm pretty sure it just means like sharding. Oh my god! I don't know. Anyway, let's change the subject. Um, did you hear about these rings that you, people are buying as engagement rings? That the stone is—it's really weird. It's called a smog-free ring, okay. and they put one hundred thousand gallons of pollution into what? this tiny box oh yeah i you did heard? hear this it's crazy they're really pretty and it makes like a diamond yeah it looks like a gem yeah and if you like opened it and inhaled it all it would shorten your life by six to eight years like that's how much pollution is in this oh tiny little ring um they're just able to like they have these boxes around the world that oh clean my the God. air and then they take the stuff from the box and they like somehow siphon it into this little 
thingy and it creates a gem. How much does it this cost? It's only 290 bucks. Okay, then it is the thing that I heard, but I yeah. didn't hear all that detail because I was like, all I saw was like, like, di like diamond ring or engagement ring made from dirt, dirt basically. or something like that. And then I was just shocked at the price, but I didn't hear all the details. It's really wow. pretty. I'm into it. I'd be super into that too. The funny thing is you can pick the city. <laughs> oh my God. I kind of know why that I love tickles that. me. Yeah, I want smog from Rome. Made into Do you? a ring. I don't know. Just be like a cool... Just because we talked about the birds there and everything, I feel like there's like I mean, some cool nature stuff. I like it. how it's so affordable. Yeah. Yes. No joke. Yeah. I mean, people waste a lot of money and on those dumb rings. I think it's a really rings. good... I mean, you're sucking pollution out of the air. Mm -hmm. What's what's the... Where's the downside to any no, of this? No, it's awesome. It's all great. I mm -hmm. want to see that ring. Yeah. It was in the New York Times. I'll that put is it in the really newsletter. cool. Yeah. Oh. And I thought, well, that's a clever little idea because they have these... I guess you'd call them filter boxes. They're really big. Um, and they're around in different cities to filter the air. And I guess somebody was like, hey, can I have some of that smog? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I guess they say, like, you know, it's it's carbon, right? Like all those kind of things. Yeah. They just Well, that's what, how they decided. The person that decided to do it was like, saying whatever it is that's in there eventually turns Turn, into a diamond. Yeah. I guess it's carbon yeah. or whatever you said. And the, I never really knew that. So that's cool. That's really cool. Uh, but speaking of pollution, I read this study. Also, This one was actually in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and it was about how umpires' performance mm -hmm. is correlated with how much pollution is in the city that day. What? So the pollution in that city affects their ability to tell whether it's a strike or a ball oh, or whatever. Oh, my God. Isn't it crazy? What can we think of? What, what can we well, infer from that? We can infer that being in po uh, polluted areas is very bad for your cognitive abilities. Yeah. And well, is that what they were able to say? Like, it, does mm -hmm. that have something to do with the chemicals impairing your cognitive ability? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's the same that they've found it with agricultural workers, like oh that are out in pollution all day. And then they're, when they are tested, they are like yeah. not as sharp. Oh my gosh. When I, somebody must have been like, I'm going to see what the hell's going on with these empires. Someone mad at sports. Wow. But I guess it makes sense. But who so would think of that? So if you take that? that same umpire mm -hmm. and you put him in another city. Yeah, on a different day. It's okay. On a, Okay, so the effects are not... They might be cumulative. Okay. But... Oh, it, God. It, right. Because, you know, that makes we sense, We should all too. be walking around with gas masks. Well, do you know that how you always see Asian yes. people with those things? Yes. And I always think, what are they doing? And now they're the freaking smartest ones. <laughs> That's why they're... Come on. <laughs> why it's do like they the do it? It's like the oldest civilization. Like <laughs> We don't listen. Yeah. Whitey's stupid right. and now again. we're over here like, you know what's really great? Acupuncture. They're like, <laughs> we know. We know. It's really great. <laughs> right. But I always see them like on planes and stuff. Oh and I'm like, God. yeah, we know there's germs, but can you knock it off with that thing? I wore one of those he all the time not. when I was pregnant because I was so sensitive to smells. Shut up. I, I couldn't go to the nail salon. I couldn't go in grocery stores because I went to the grocery store. And walked past two aisles away from the meat section, and I, I vomited four times in the grocery store. <laughs> it's not funny, one time, but it is. Like in, in one visit. That is terrible. Like, this is awful because I was so sensitive to the smells of things. And so that little piece of fabric did the trick. Mm hmm. And How no, is but that? I, I, I did the fabric, and then I put uh, uh, orange, uh, sweet, yeah, or like sweet orange oil on the inside of it so that when I inhaled, I would only smell the orange because it was the only smell I that made me not I cannot believe puke. you did that and you were not embarrassed. I you was never mortified. told me. I was also starving. <laughs> it's like, I need food. <laughs> and I also really need a pedicure. So, so you wore one while you got a pedicure. Yes. And they, did anyone... I feel like of all the people who are going to be understanding. <laughs> I just... <laughs> Did they ask you about No, it? not a single question. They're so tolerant. Yeah. They're like, we go, we know what you mean. Yeah. She's Did like, they same, have same, but mind? different. <laughs> Stop it. That's insane. I cannot believe that. I would, pr I promise you, I would rather puke all day. Oh, 
We I are think, very different. I think. After 37 times, Suze. Maybe not. I was so done puking. I, I was probably like, wouldn't I'm care about so a pedicure. Done. I probably wouldn't. I cared about it so much. It was okay. like, I, I, oh God. <laughs> Sarah, I'm writing so this down. Bad. Sarah's, what would you call that? Wow. Uh, hygiene mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like, where'd you get that well, on Amazon got, or what? No, you know, what happened is, is I had been throwing up so much that I was so dehydrated and I couldn't even stand up that I had to take myself to the, uh, ER. And when I was at the yeah. ER, it was flu season. And I was so terrified of everybody. I was like, the last thing I want to do is get the flu. Like, mm-hmm. So I had a, a mask over my face. And I'm like, oh, this is lovely. And so I just stole three more and I kept it in my glove box. Meanwhile, like, and, if, you know how they charge you like $100 for a well, Band-Aid at yeah. the ER? That bill was $275. And I You didn't walked, even get seen by a I doctor. I didn't get seen. I walked in and I was like, I can't take this. This is too many sick people. I, I, the, all they did was take my, oh my uh, vitals, like my blood pressure. And then they said, would you like a blanket? Because I was like freezing. And I said, sure. And they never even brought me the blanket. And it's still $275. Wow. Did not even get seen. Didn't get one thing did done. Did you fight it? You can yeah, get your we, money back. We did. We fought it. It was like, I think we brought it down to like $80 or something like that. Yeah. But, you know, Jeez. it was still, I was just like, are you kidding it's me? It's so backwards. This is insane. You did nothing. I waited because I wait, I already bit, I waited for three and a half hours. Mm-hmm. I was like done waiting. I'm like, I can't even wait here anymore. I'm going to get sick. There are people puking everywhere. It was flu season when it was really bad. This oh. is a real special episode. <laughs> we've, we've covered a lot of things. Although I did forget to mention when we were talking about emojis you know how, like, the emojis on the other kind of phone that's not Apple? Yeah. I guess those are, what are they called? Androids. Androids. Yeah. They have, like, weird emojis. Remember, like, people were mad because the cheeseburger had the cheese under oh the meat. Oh, my God, that's so like funny. That. It's like, yeah, it's like dollar store, uh, so like, knockoff stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they kind of, they did it again because they made a salad emoji, but then they put, like, slices of hard-boiled egg in the uh-huh, salad, uh-huh. which I know a lot of people eat that, like but that. like of all the, the ingredients in yeah, a salad, yeah. it had lettuce, tomato, and hard-boiled egg. And so then the vegans were mad. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sakes. <laughs> but I It's mean, a chef salad. Or, I understand. Or salad. What do they call those? Yeah, chef salad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But come on. That's like yeah. not one of the what core you, right. ingredients. You could have put croutons. Or anything, or cucumber, any, cucumber, pepper, anything. A lot of different vegetables yeah. out there. It doesn't even, have, yeah, just put like little squiggly orange things. Who cares? Like does, Who cares? Who cares? The well, vegans. apparently vegans, yeah. <laughs> but like, I do enjoy a hard-boiled egg, as you know, but oh, yeah, okay. I, I think they had a valid point on that one. Because if you're a vegan yeah. and you want to use the damn app or the yes, uh, emoji. I agree with that. And then you're like, oh, great. <laughs> I feel like people will still understand the message you're sending. <laughs> Nobody's going to be like, oh, you're not a vegan anymore because you use the egg emoji. I just think, like, I wonder who's on the team of emoji people on the Android side of things. Because yeah. we've heard a lot about yeah. the Apple team and a yeah. lot goes into it. Yeah. I think they're a little more loosey-goosey. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should try white wine over there. <laughs> Yeah, they probably have like a whole bar. Yeah, like we have every cleaning supply you ever want available, Sarah. I, if your emojis were really good, I would consider switching to <laughs> If your runner were running in the right direction. What if that were it? They're just all mirror images. Like the runner's going the right direction. They're right. flipped. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Um, okay, wait. Let me think if I have one more thing before we go. Um, I guess I'll stick with the Instagram theme. Mm-hmm. Because somebody from the New York Times went to all those places that, like the Color Factory, yes, and the Ice Cream Museum. Yes, I've been to all those. There's one now that's for pizza. Oh yeah, it's like a pizza museum. Yeah, mm, not as into that. I really want to eat it. I'm not less interested in looking at it or taking pictures with pepperoni. Totally, and, stuff. D- and it's a limited color palette. And then they have one for dogs. Where I'm for you that. You can get pictures with dogs and stuff. Um. Anyway, it was talking about this weird phenomenon that is a a response to the Instagram movement Mm -hmm. where people want to go places where they can take pictures more than they want to go to like a real museum. Oh my God, it's so dumb. Because the picture opportunities aren't as good there and they're not as colorful Mm -hmm. and things like that. 
And so she described it in this way, which I thought was accurate. What do you think? She said that these museums create facsimiles of experiences. Mm -hmm. Uh Because I'll be honest, when we went to the Color Factory, that was probably my least favorite part of our trip to San Francisco. True. And the least exciting, the least, the part where I I felt like we were kind of like doing a job or like going through. Well, that's because it was for the podcast, though, and we wanted pictures to promote the show. Yeah. But why do most people go? Hmm. Like, if I didn't have this show, I would not have gone to one, any of those things. It was fun to go to the Museum of Ice Cream, but it was fun with kids. Yeah. And they didn't really different. care about the picture. In fact, they were really frustrated when they were like, pose more. <laughs> it is weird when you go, though, because you are surrounded by people taking selfies, mm-hmm. and you start to see how gross it looks. Yeah. Well, the weird thing was is I was with a group of people who were, like, medium interested, and, you know, my husband who's not interested, and... In that group, even in an uh, uh, in an environment that was designed for taking pictures, I felt embarrassed doing it. Yeah, I did too at the color factory. Isn't that I was weird? like, "Well, this is awkward." Yeah, yeah, and like a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. And like, mo- I feel like most people are real comfortable with it. I'm uh, yeah. They also have a museum of like rose, so oh, it's I'm like okay a lot of pink and yeah, bubbles yeah. and stuff that's only even tangentially associated with rosé it's not as if right it's exactly about rosé it's more about this other idea Mm -hmm. of what it represents Uh uh-huh i think the 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 right thing to do or or the good idea here is to take somehow integrate like the this instagrammy like picture taking world with more art and I feel like some of them do that. Like the they Museum of say, Ice Cream, I think, did that. They had like this section. It was like every room has a different color, and it was like the black ice cream and licorice and all that kind of stuff. And they had some really cool pieces of art, like this like sculpture of the David with an ice cream cone on his head kind of dripping over his face, and I thought that was cool. Well, and they said in the article that a lot of museums mm-hmm. are wising up mm-hmm. and creating more of um a photographic opportunity for people that do go to the real museum, yeah. which I, I like think that. is a nice That's idea. That's what they have to do. Uh, LACMA is, it? Yeah. Yeah. is doing that, and I love it. My yeah. aunt's a docent there, so everybody should go and get a tour. A docent? Yeah. I don't know that word. Uh, like an art docent? I've never heard of that. What? What is it? How it's do like you spell a guide. it? D-O-C-E-N-T? Docent? Oh, D-O. oh, with a T. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Thanks. I love learning. Am I saying that wrong? No, I, I have no idea. Well, let's double check. I, <laughs> you think because I don't know it, it must be wrong. Well, yeah, isn't that weird? That's like terrible. that's how that's how like. But I like absolutely know that that's a word. I'm just taking a long. Why do they though. call it that? I think it's like all because. It's, I mean, because it, it, a tour guide isn't really. It's not the enough. word. Because it's not like you're. It's getting, inadequate. Yeah. Okay. You need like it, and also the people who do this are really yeah knowledgeable yes a member of a teaching staff immediately below below professor rank Mm -hmm. a person who acts as a guide typically on a voluntary basis in a museum art gallery or zoo cool and i spelled it right too yeah look i wasn't judging you no i know that i was i was merely doubting myself because i'm like you are are a knowledgeable human being and i was like oh my god have i been saying this wrong well can she dose at me when i go there (laughs) yeah and it's really fun and she's so knowledgeable and it's great like she'll the, the way they do it at the museum is they pick four or five different pieces of art in different uh, areas of the museum mm. that all have some kind of common theme. And she works, she does it with, well, with all adults and kids, but mostly like high school kids on tours for school and stuff like that. So she'll do a concept like uh, social justice mm-hmm. and she'll have them like talk about how it applies how, in yeah, each. Yeah, in each thing. Or like, what's cool. the message that's being sent? Who do you think the artist is in in this one? And what's the, you know, a lot of like uh, uh, like Latin American art and like during a time of a lot of like revolution and things like that. So it's really cool. Wow. And she always tests it on me and takes me there and, and goes like, what do you think? I'd so love I get to, to like go talk next about, time. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh my God, it'd be so fun. Mm-hmm. We went from dildos to docents. We sure did. We learned so much along the way. Fun episode. Thanks, guys. See you next time.